Hey everybody, Steve Clayton here. Good evening and welcome to session six. Got myself here tonight. We've got we've got a full house except for Chris. We've got myself, Mark, Brent. Uh, Chris is on vacation and Aiden is in New Zealand, so he's on the call. Uh, but like, hey, we, hey, but he won't be talking too much because of the uh, internet quality and in, uh, at where he's at in New Zealand. Um, but we're going to get started in a couple minutes and um, hope you guys like this. I took this picture yesterday. I had to take the plane to Tampa uh, from Key West. And I was just kind of up there by myself, just relaxing and enjoying being in and out of the clouds. And uh, I just looked to my left and I was like, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. So I quick snapped a picture and uh, obviously the focus is a little bit off. So that's not your, uh, it's not your settings or your, uh, your internet connection or anything. It's, it is a little blurry, but I thought it was still worth it. And I thought it was kind of cool. So I thought I'd share. So again, this was yesterday. Uh, I was on my way to Tampa to drop the plane off uh, for some maintenance. So I thought it was kind of cool. So enjoy that for a couple minutes uh, while we, uh, while we wait to get started. And Aiden was telling me that it's in New Zealand. He, it's, it's like almost freezing there, like close to freezing. He was in yeah. fire. And uh, mm. I'm like, oh, I can't even, I can't even fathom what that kind of cold would, it would be like right now, I just because it's like, you know, God knows, in 90 degrees every day here. <clears throat> yeah. Are you guys finally getting rain, Brent? Mark, I saw you guys were in addition to horrific forest fires, you were also getting rain. Well, I was really Southern California, but. Well, I wish, I wish it's 100 and what two degrees outside today. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. No rain. Alrighty then. What's it like in um, in Key West? It is lovely. Uh, we're not getting much rain. Um, a little bit here or there. And uh, it's a little bit more humid than normal. Um, but uh, it's really, really nice. So it's routinely in the, you know, high 80s or so during the day and at night, uh, maybe cools off to 80, <laughs> you know? but the minute you get out of the sun, it's fine. It's really not bad. So I'm digging it. I'm liking it. Sounds like Fiji. Yeah, I bet. All right, we've got about another minute or so, and then we'll kind of get started. No, yeah, Aiden's not in Fiji anymore. He's in back in New Zealand. Back in New Zealand, but on your way back home soon. Yeah, um, day after tomorrow, back to Argentina. There you go. You're actually, your voice is actually coming in quite well now. Oh, cool. Yeah, oh, that's pretty good. Vicky says it's 95 degrees in New Jersey. Yikes. That's a, That's hot and humid, New Jersey. All right, we're going uh, to well, get, get, get seven. We'll wait in one more minute. What would you say, Aiden? Toby asked if I have a parrot in Argentina. <laughs> I've got no idea why he's asking that I question. didn't know either. I, I saw that and I was like, what? I don't, I don't understand. I really <laughs> no, don't I get don't. that. I don't get it. Maybe that's just how they view you, like, you know, the, the guy that has a parrot in Argentina. So I don't you. know. <laughs> Uh, John says it's really bad in North Carolina. Scorching. Scorching in North Carolina, I bet. What kind of plane? Ooh, we get to talk about planes for a minute. Thank you. Anybody who wants to ask questions about planes, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk aviation. So this is a Cirrus SR-22. It's a 2008 Cirrus SR-22 for those of you who know anything about airplanes. Where are the mini guns? <laughs> Do I? Yeah. Yes. I. Yep. I pilot it. When I said I fly, I flew it the plane. I meant I actually fly. I'm the pilot. Yeah. I it was only me in the plane. 
just me when I took this picture. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dale says you getting one, and I'm assuming in that he means that if you don't have a parrot, are you gonna are you planning? I, sh I should get one. Getting one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of them flying around down there. Maybe I should try to catch one. <laughs> Tony Donahue says, "Are you flying and texting?" I often do that. Yes, I think I've even I think I've even texted Aiden in the, from the plane before. <laughs> so, just depends on where where I am, where you're flying. Sometimes you actually get cell service. So, and I do have this other little gadget that I never set up, but where you can use like the satellite signal to do texting, but I never bother to set it up. So, all right, well. I've gone on and on about aviation for long enough, I guess. Um, we will we will get ourselves started here. Uh, let me get off of the plane picture and get to our slides. All right. All right, everybody. Good evening and welcome to session six. Okay, we're going to take some deep breaths. Um, let's talk about what we're going to do tonight. Uh, first of all, we're going to announce our challenge results. So we've had a lot of people who have uh, met the criteria, met the objectives, and that's been really good to see. Um, and so we have our three winners, and we will uh, announce those in a, in a moment, and, uh, and we'll congratulate them. So that's great. Um, you know, one of the nice things about doing content uh, and training in a course like this or anyone that we do, and doing it in this way, rather than having videos pre-recorded and all that kind of stuff, is that we can really kind of make mid-course corrections, you know? And it's good because, again, you know, I talk about this with software a lot, where, you know, I say that, you know, the way to develop software is you develop it for a small group, that's great, and then you deploy it to a larger beta test group, that's great, but we can't do that. Well, it's kind of the same with training. You know, we we do training with a very small group, and it's a very different experience than when you have a bigger group, you know? Um, and so things that we think are easy or, or that will be, you know, will be sort of learned easily oftentimes turn out to be challenging for people. And... The reverse is true as well. Some things that we're worried are going to be challenging for people turn out to be easy. And so we're like, okay, well, you know, we kind of have to make some adjustments based on, you know, where we think we're at right now. And also by, with our schedule, because we are actually in looking at it, we're even a little bit ahead of schedule. I mean, for the past six weeks, we've been just pedal to the floor, you know, as far as just each session adding new things, new things, new things, new things. And we feel like we absolutely need to catch our breath a little bit. And what I wanted to do tonight is to just talk a little bit about putting this opportunity in perspective. You know, I think that as internet marketers, it is very, very easy to lose perspective. And let me give you a good example of that. Uh, I talked about this to our Blueprint Academy group the other day, many of whom are doing uh, white label stuff. So, you know, sourcing manufacturing in China, bringing in uh, inventory, selling on Amazon, that kind of stuff. And we are too. Um, and I talked about Christmas. And I said, you know, a lot of times those of us who are in online marketing, we're spoiled. And we really don't put things in perspective. We don't take Christmas as seriously as we should. And we don't take Christmas as seriously as brick and mortar retail guys. They don't have a choice because a traditional brick and mortar store, it's not uncommon for them to really make all of their profit in November and December all of their profit in two months. The rest of the year, they're just supporting their infrastructure. You know, their rent, their utilities, their employees, their insurance, their cash flow for inventory, on and on and on. And 
you know, a lot of times we just go, ah, you know, it's Christmas. That's great, but I'll probably run out of stock. He he he, isn't that great? You know, oh, these things sell so fast. When in reality, what we ought to be doing is understanding that Christmas, November and December, is usually about a 300% increase in retail sales. And so we ought to be structuring our cash flow and our inventory so that we have 300% of the normal run rate of, of, of inventory in November and December. If we don't, we're leaving money on the table. And we can get away with it, right? Because we don't, we, we, we're spoiled. In, in the online world. We don't have overhead. We don't have to go out and buy a building. We don't have to go out and sign a lease. We don't have to go out and, you know, uh, deal with a franchise fee or you know, whatever it is, you know, spend hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on employees and overhead. We don't have any of that stuff. So we don't have to make our profit in November and December. But it, so, so that's kind of a good thing, you know, but it's also a bad thing because we don't, Sometimes we lose perspective and I want to bring us all back to reality tonight with some perspective. All right. Not just about comparing what we're doing here with brick and mortar. In fact, not really doing that at all, but comparing this to even comparing this to other online marketing models. And I'm going to share with you guys a story about uh, a very detailed story or description anyway of how I made my first huge success, a million dollars, my first year of full-time affiliate marketing. I'm going to show you the exact numbers, what I did. And, and I think it will put some things in perspective. I hope it will. We also need to do tonight an AdSense reality check. You guys need to understand a little bit more about AdSense, what it's doing, how it works, what to expect. Okay. Um, I don't think we did a good enough job. We're focused more on the, rightly so, on explaining how to get the traffic and how to get the traffic at the right price than we were on sort of managing your expectations with AdSense, which you'll see is the right thing to do. However, I think we needed to just clue you in a little bit more. So we'll talk about that. We're going to focus mostly in the training and, and the um, action items on one metric and focus on practicing this, optimizing this one metric traffic and cost per engagement because folks this is the core you'll see that adsense largely takes care of itself as do the other monetization methods and, and I'll, I'll i'll run through that a little bit with you and hopefully you'll see why when i talk about the perspective but we need to nail this piece okay and again hopefully this will all come together and you'll sort of see why we're also going to talk to you a little bit about a, a revenue expansion trick that we want you to know right now uh, called the two-page post conversion. Okay, so we'll go through that. All right, so we've got this will likely be a, a little bit more relaxed tonight <laughs> than our typical session. Um, we're going to take our time. It, we'll probably have more time to answer some questions, so that's good. And I expect it to be a little bit shorter than than uh, most of the sessions have been. Okay. Okay, so our post engagement, not post engagement, like after engagement, but the post as in the blog post uh, engagement challenge, uh, if you recall, it was the first three people to get to 2,000 uh, engagements <clears throat> and 2,000 engagements at less than four cents. So really three cents and less, All right? So that was the goal. And we had a lot of entries. Um, I don't know exactly how many, but uh, there were maybe more than I thought, which was good, it means people are getting it. It also means that people are get, getting the traffic at the uh, very low prices, which you'll see, hopefully, is kind of the hard part or the only hard part. It's not, and it's not even that hard. Okay. So uh, first, prize, first prize of $500 is awarded to Slavko Filipovich. Second prize, the Apple Watch. Jean could I just get like Bill and Melissa and come on, guys, you're killing me here. Second prize is Apple Watch and I'm Jorn uh, and I'm, I'm not going to try the last name. Third prize, iTunes $100 gift, gift card, Majorca. So there we go. Okay. So congratulations to all you guys. We'll be reaching out to you in email. Um, these were the first three 
that uh, you know followed all the rules that we laid out uh, in the last session and uh, and achieved that goal. Okay. Hey, Mark, um, you've probably seen more of the stuff. Any anything you want to comment on about the the ones that came in? Anything came to mind about other than we had a lot of people that you know that achieved the goal, which is great. Any 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 other insight into that or? Uh, you can say no. You can say no. It's okay. I just I put you on the spot. This wasn't this wasn't like a canned canned thing where I had a question and I and I had a right right response. Um, you know there were a lot of people um that were getting good reach, um, but but didn't quite have the engagement. And I think you know kind of analyzing some of that is, you know, you, you need to just be sure and be consistent with your the ads that you're running and maintain that because. You know, engagement or those clicks is really just going to be a, a function of, of math, right? How much budget you put towards, you know, three cents, and you're going to hit 2,000. So, you know. Right. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that because that's really one of the key things that we want you guys to be practicing. Okay. So let's take a step back and uh, let's dive into some perspective here, okay? Because perspective is everything. There we go. So this was when I first um, went full time, okay, and this was my first full year of not having a real job, and I worked by myself. I was totally by myself at that time. Um, I actually had some success and notoriety uh, because I, I managed to make a million dollars in that year. I'm sure it wasn't. It was you know 990 that whatever it was. You know it was good. We rounded up certainly, um, but. <clears throat> and I and I did it a hundred percent through affiliate marketing and a hundred percent through AdWords. Okay, so one hundred percent of my traffic to the websites I had, which I didn't even have that many at the time, which is good because my websites I actually made the websites myself, which is is something that you you, you it's something you can't unsee. These are these were so bad. Um, that they, they likely turn many people to stone out there. I mean, they're, they're so ugly. Uh, and uh, in fact, I think a few years back, if any of you have been with us for a long time, you may have gotten a treat because um, one year I showed one website that I did. I was, it was just to a live audience though. Um, in, and I think it was in Las Vegas. And um, there, there, were, there were many people that needed medical attention. It was, it was seriously that bad. So anyway, <clears throat> um, so 100% AdWords traffic to horrific looking websites. The monetization was 100% affiliate marketing. Um, and in fact, it was really one product. Uh, and um, and I'll, I'll walk through what it was. I had to focus really on two things, two challenging things, right? One is I had to get traffic at a decent price. And you'll see decent price is, is, is a, certainly a contextual term that has a whole different meaning than what we're talking about, okay? <clears throat> so I, I had to get traffic at a decent price and I had to get, um, I had to convert that traffic at a very, very high level, high for affiliate marketing anyway, to buyers in order to meet my goals, all right? Now, I had a rule that I wanted to get to, I wanted to average about 100% return on investment, okay? And what is that? I throw that term around a lot, and so what does that mean? What it means is that I would spend $100 on AdWords traffic, okay? That would that would be an expense right away, immediately. That would go out, and I, in, I intended to make $200 in revenue from the affiliate marketing commissions, Okay, 100 of that would go to pay back the traffic cost I just incurred, and 100 is profit. Okay, so in other words, like when Aiden talked about that in, in the in the webinars, you know, somebody gives you give somebody a dollar, they come back three hours later, and they give you two dollars. That's 100% return on investment. So, you know, why did I want 100%? Well. And it's not always achievable. That was the goal because I felt in my analysis and study of AdWords traffic back then that that was kind of one of the magic numbers to reach for a sustainable business. 
um, you know, that you could absorb some of the variations in competition, ad costs, the variabilities of seasonality, of, you know, all sorts of things uh, to meet my financial goals. And I still think to this day that in paid traffic, specifically AdWords traffic, please don't confuse AdWords with AdSense. This is, you know, what I'm describing to you is not a model that we're doing with the 100K factory. This is a model that doesn't really work anymore. Um, but I still think that that's a good benchmark uh, if you're using paid traffic is 100% return on investment. OK, so I'd like everybody to understand all this, that, you know, you you spend a hundred dollars. And it's an expense that just think of it, it just goes away immediately, goes out of your pocket. And then someone comes in and gives you two hundred dollars in revenue and you put two hundred dollars in your pocket. So in essence, you're paying back that original one hundred dollars that you spent out of your pocket and you're left with a hundred dollars profit. Okay. So that's why it's a hundred percent return on investment. You invested a hundred dollars and you made a profit of a hundred dollars. That's why it's 100% return on investment. Okay. So here's one place to think about perspective. I was paying uh, on average 40 cents per visitor to my horrible websites. That is a hell of a lot when you're trying to make money with affiliate marketing. Okay. 40 cents. Now perspective here, we're talking about sending traffic at three cents. We're, we're talking about engagement numbers first, which is about three cents per engagement. That ultimately will drive traffic to a, almost a penny or sometimes even less, you know, one to one and a half kind of cents per visitor is the 100k model okay my model was you know 40 times that okay <clears throat> the payouts were decent you know for uh, affiliate marketing back then now mind you this is almost a decade ago okay so it was uh, 35 dollars per buyer on average there were some upsells and things like that um, and so if you did some quick math, just some conceptual math, but I'm going to show you the actual math in a second, but some conceptual math, you know, a thousand visitors would cost me about 400 bucks just to break even, just to, just to make back that 400 bucks and not lose money. I had to make 11 sales. Okay. That's more than a 1% conversion rate just to break even. 1% conversion rate is usually very good in affiliate marketing. I, I didn't want to break even. I wanted to make money, right? 22 sales or around a 2% conversion rate was what was required for my goal of 100% ROI. It's a little bit more than a 2% conversion rate. Challenging. Very, very challenging. So here I am having to work on both getting the traffic at a decent price and converting that traffic to buyers. And both were very, very difficult. Okay, because I was bidding on weight loss terms, which are very expensive. Okay, and there's a lot of competition. So, so doing all the work to, to, to get that to the point where it was optimized and continuing to optimize it and continuing to respond to competition that came in and things like that was a lot of effort. And then converting that traffic to buyers at a, at a much higher rate than normal. 2.2%. So in some cases, double the normal affiliate marketing conversion rate. Very challenging, particularly when your websites cause people to go into seizures because they're so ugly. Okay. So I had to work my ass off to get the weight loss traffic. I had to work my ass off to get those conversion rates. This, the, the stuff I was bidding on, because you could make the argument, well, you know, AdWords, it's so targeted. You know, you were buying, you were bidding on, you know, diet, diet plans for sale or something. No, 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 no. I couldn't afford the targeted terms. I couldn't afford to test the targeted terms. You'll see that potentially uh, that may have ma that may have made sense because it, it doesn't always mean if the traffic is too ex is very expensive, that doesn't mean it's bad. You have to test it. Unfortunately, if it's so expensive, sometimes you can't test it. I couldn't afford to really test that, the more targeted terms. So I'll, show, I'll tell you exactly what I was bidding on. I was bidding on people who were searching for Weight Watchers Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, South Beach Diet, a couple others I can't remember now off the top of my head. 
things that were popular 10 years ago, you know? Um, and, and that's what I tested because those were the terms I could afford to test. Okay. So I made, I mean, it was close enough for rounding to a million dollars in profit in one full year, but these numbers are scary to people. I, I got around 3 million visitors. I spent $1.2 million. Now, I didn't have $1.2 million sitting around. I spent it as I made it. You know, I mean, I got paid, you know, every whatever it was, uh, every month or something, um, you know, from ClickBank, okay? Um, and once you make enough money with ClickBank back then, they didn't even do wire transfers then. Or maybe they did. I don't think so. No, they didn't because they, they started FedExing checks. They would, they would overnight checks once they reached a certain size. So I quickly got to that size. Um, so I spent $1.2 million. That scares the shit out of people. But I made 2.2. And at the peak, at the peak, right, in January, like January 3rd, right, when people, you know, got through their hangovers and were, um, you know, were finally focused on their their list for New Year's, the resolution list, I was spending more than $5,000 a day, right? Initially, I had to spend one to $2,000 on testing before I reached the run rate, you know, before I, before I even knew if these terms were good, I spent, you know, one or two grand, something like that. Right. So I, I ask you guys, I mean, was it worth it? I mean, I'm serious. Like I want an answer, like, like put in yes or no. Like, I mean, and, and, you know, it seems silly that I'm asking this, but I get, I get a lot of pushback all the time about this. You know, people say, of course, of course, of course, of course. But, you know, it, it, it's not that it, – people have a little bit of a mental block about this. I see this all the time. I think I have this on slide. Um, I see this all the time with AdWords. You know, I'll, I'll deal with some people with AdWords, and um, I'll say – Okay, well, how's your how's it going? You know, what's the return on investment? Oh, it's about 100. percent Like, oh, that's great. Um, and people are like, yeah, but you know, I wish I was making more. Okay, well, um, what's your daily budget? Uh, well, it's um a hundred dollars. Like, okay, well, how much of the daily budget are you spending? Oh, we we hit the daily budget every day. Okay, well, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, why isn't your daily budget one gajillion, right? But people don't think like that. They don't, they're like, oh, I can't spend that much money. Well, yeah, yes, you can. <laughs> you can if your business model supports it. And, you know, people look at this and they go, oh, Steve, my God. Yeah, good. Is there a question? Some people are oh. saying it's okay for you because you, some people are saying it's okay for you because you had all the money no. there. But oh. I think you can reiterate that you started small and you gradually scaled to where you were spending 5,000 per day. Yeah, exactly. No, I didn't have a million dollars sitting in the, this is before I was doing affiliate marketing. <laughs> I didn't have a ton of cash, you know, lying around. I mean, I wasn't, I was, I was a successful corporate guy, so I wasn't poor and I certainly had opportunities to spend money that others didn't. But you know what? Everybody on this call does as well. You know, I mean, it wasn't like I, I didn't do more than the kind of investment that you guys have made in this course. And and, and you, we're talking and you about. didn't start spending 5000 per day. When no. you started, you were spending no. much, much less. Yeah, no, much, much less. In fact, yeah, I started in the – I think I started in the summer. I'd have to go back and look. But it's it was slower then, which is good. I mean, in, in retrospect, I got a lucky there. Uh, I mean, it still would have worked out. I just wouldn't have made as much because I wouldn't have been able to test and scale as quickly as possible. I kind of started the weight loss cycle in, at the best of times. So I made the most amount of money uh, in, during that period. Um, I would have still been very successful had I started January 1st, but 
but I wouldn't have made as much money because I wouldn't have been because I didn't have the cash to be able to scale as fast. Other people are saying it's fine saying that in hindsight. Yeah. But it's it's more the principle. Like, um, you know, you knew that you were going to scale slowly and yeah. you expected, you planned to spend $100 and make money back off that. So right. uh, it is true that it's easy to see it in hindsight, but if you've got a plan, it's also just easy to see it working forward. Yeah. And, and you know, the other part is that you have to have a little bit of faith in the beginning and you have to be willing to invest. Um, and AdWords is a tough game. You know, I mean, this is another thing I see with AdWords where, uh, people will be like, oh, well, it, it didn't work and I, I couldn't I couldn't spend any more. I, I w- it was just too risky. And I'm like, OK, well, how many clicks did you get? Oh, I got 10. OK, well, you're an idiot. You know, I mean, because sorry, but, uh, you know, you, you've got to work the math. You've got to have common sense. Right. If you can only afford to pay for 10 clicks on, on AdWords, then it's not your game. OK, just move on to something else because you need hundreds of clicks to establish patterns and statistical significance and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you can't do it that way. So in the beginning, you know, I, I said that I spent about, a, you know, a couple thousand dollars on testing, right? Um, that's kind of on faith. You have to sort of put that money at risk. The other money, not so much because you already know that the testing's working. You're already bringing in money so that you can, you can put it back into the business and stuff. You're not doing that. It's not, it's not terribly risky at that point. I mean, there's always some risk involved in AdWords, that's for sure. Much more risky than what we're doing here. Believe me, 10 times more risky. Um, but um, Steve, yeah, it was easier. Yeah, go ahead. Just uh, another reiteration. It's just like, you know, don't – we're not telling you to increase your budget. What we're telling you to – No. <laughs> you, ran, you ran out and you found a winner. Yeah. And you, you ran with that winner. Exactly. That's a very, very good analogy, which is, you know, partly the whole core of the 100K factory system is find the winners cheaply and then invest in them heavily. Um, although again, as we'll see, and we'll talk about, you know, the hundred K factor is a, is a, is a scale of like one tenth of what we're talking about that I had to invest because the traffic was so damn expensive, you know, even 10 years ago. Right. So yeah, that's a very, very good point. So I certainly wasn't going to, I wasn't going to spend 1.2 million of my own money and just put it all on red and roll the dice. You know, that, that's not what I did. You know, that was on an ongoing basis and, uh, and you know, it built up from, uh, much, much smaller, obviously. So anyway, I want you to ask, you know, just ask yourself and think about it. And also, you know, comparing this to brick and mortar or even white label, you know, um, it's white label is a great business. We love it. But, you know, it's it's much more complicated. Um, and there's a lot of cash flow involved. You know, you have to spend thousands of dollars on inventory uh, to start to get a return on the investment and it takes a long time, right? Because you got to sell all that inventory or at least half of that to even break even, right? And so there's this constant juggling. I mean, we we had to change our whole accounting and the way that we do business because we never had to deal with inventory before in our business. You know, years ago, we did only drop shipping uh, for our e-commerce models and we never had to worry about inventory and cash flow. Um, and then when you start to ramp up in e-com and you start to be successful in white label and you start to, to place orders that are, you know, 50, 75, a hundred thousand dollars worth of product because you need that much, right. To keep up with demand. Well then, you know, even really successful businesses have to start to juggle, you know, cash flow and just make sure they have the cash flow, you know? So, um, Anyway, just something to think about. A couple um, of comments, Steve. Um, yep. Some people are looking at this too literally. We're not telling you to go and spend money with AdWords. No. We're using this oh my God. as an example, showing you Steve's first year, and we're comparing uh, the 100K factory business model to right. other models like brick and mortar. So we're not jumping ahead and talking about AdWords. We're just... We're just trying to put some perspective in this whole thing. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll hopefully let me bring that in in a second. So I want everybody to stop complaining about you know spending money because here's the point. That, now let's compare this to what we're talking about with 100K Factory. You don't need to worry about spending 40 cents per click. Okay, even by accident, you're getting a factor of a tenth of that. Right? 
you're getting, we're already seeing after one training session, people are getting three cents per engagement, which means they're getting traffic at probably about one to two cents. Okay. That's unbelievable. All right. And this is very targeted traffic. You don't need to worry about the conversion rate. Okay. Because the conversion rate has two things. One is where do the ads go and how many ads and all that kind of stuff. We've done all that for you. We've optimized that. And the other part of the conversion rate uh, issue is what ads are being served up. And AdSense takes care of that. Okay. It's a, I just wanted to bring up that what I did was looks good on paper. And the point I'm trying to make is what you have is much better. All right. And won't require anywhere near that level of commitment, you know. And so I wanted everybody to get perspective on that. All right. Because we were talking uh, to. Um, uh, well, let, let's talk about this. So so engagements usually means, you know, multiple clicks or and, or, and visits, because what happens is that engagement could be a share or a like that turns into multiple uh, reaches, you know, across the audiences, right? And then that gets shared and liked and all that kind of stuff. So essentially an engagement cost of 0.03 means cost per visit, a, a, cl a click, an equivalent quick click in AdWords is much lower. Then a, a visit generates many page views. Okay, and we'll see how we're gonna increase that page views, meaning that, and you saw the stats from the sites, you know, that the average page views or whatever it is, three or, you know, whatever for everybody who comes in. Many page views means lots of ads are seen. Many ads means the, that the, the likelihood that a person will click on something is higher and we get paid. And engagement equals more likes, equals less need for advertising spend, equals more traffic. I mean, all of this just plays onto itself, onto itself, onto itself, okay? Unlike the model that I showed you, which was still pretty damn good, right? What we have in 100K Factory is like an order of magnitude or, or, or 10 orders of magnitude better is kind of my point here. <clears throat> you know, and I, I want to have, I want to see if I got, I just want to make sure I've got my slides here. I'm going to jump ahead for a second. And this is more about, again, comparing and putting things in perspective. Someone wrote us and, then they, and they were a little disappointed in their campaign. And we, we didn't quite understand why. They spent $30 to get uh, 1,000 engagements. That's three cents an engagement. I spent more than 10 times that on visitors. And remember, engagements means more visitors. Okay? So three cents per engagement means a much better cost per visitors. But let's just assume the worst. Let's just assume that it's three cents per visitor. Okay? What does that mean? Three cents a visitor, if you can get two affiliate sales, all right, in a thousand people, this assumes a thousand people, you've got 100% ROI. Two, two versus what I had to do, which was, if you remember, 22, okay? That's a conversion rate of 0.2%. I had to do better than 2%. Several orders of magnitude easier here. 0.03 per visitor means 100% ROI if you have a like a, you know, 20 or $40 white label product and you make two or three sales. That's 0.3%. 0.3% is 100% return on investment. Six Kindle book purchases, 0.6% conversion rate, 100% ROI. And remember, I'm suggesting that our traffic is actually even cheaper than this. So it's even better, okay? And we're gonna show you, we didn't show it to you yet, but we're gonna show you um, an example of a, of a post uh, with the cost and the, and the revenue. And it happens to work out to be 
100% ROI if you had to pay three cents for every person that came in. But we do much better than that. Okay, so that's the perspective that I want everybody to really understand, okay? Is that, you know, getting, getting visits for pennies, okay, is is so way um, um, unbelievably better, right? Than anything I could have hoped for when I was, you know, having to struggle to get uh, to get forty cents a, a visitor, right? So please don't take this. I, I don't want anybody to go out and do AdWords affiliate marketing. It's not even a model that really works anymore. I just wanted to give us all some perspective here. And to make sure that you understand what you're involved in and the opportunity that you have here. Because again, when you're faced with all, when you're only faced with this or, or, you know, and you only see this, we tend to forget about, you know, why it's so great. And, you know, honestly, we get a little spoiled, you know, all right. Some more things to think about and keep in perspective. <clears throat> and this is stuff that, you know, again, we didn't focus on last session and we feel like, you know, we probably should have, but it, it's kind of hard to, you know, it's very hard to jump in the middle of something. You, you have to, you have to take a, what is essentially kind of almost like a circular process and a lot of information that you want to give everybody and you have to lay it out linearly. And that's always a bit of a challenge. And so what happens is you end up oftentimes giving training when you have to uh, for the process to work, but it doesn't always have the right context all the time because people don't have the experience of it. Okay. So some things to note, it's like anything in this world, probably only about 5% of your posts will really make you all the money. And the rest of the time, you're just kind of, you're trying them out, you know, and you're, and you're engaging your audience in an ongoing manner and that's okay. But it's the same thing for all the people who are using this business model. You know, one in 20 will really be the big, big winners. That's a lot of ones that don't work out. And that's okay. So as you can imagine, if you only did one, which you only did, it may not have worked. <laughs> or it, it may not have, you know, gone super viral and gotten you three cents engagement and all that kind of stuff. It's okay. <laughs> Most of them are not going to work. You know, but we're averaging the ROI here. We're averaging the return on investment. You'll see that you know you might get you might get a 10%, 20% return on investment on a couple posts, and then you'll hit one that's a thousand percent. You know that kind of thing. Okay. Hey, whoever's uh, typing, if you could just uh, put yourself on mute. We're just uh, hearing some click, 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 click. Um, the other thing is that you know to note, and we're going to show you some slides here. AdSense takes a little while. We'll talk about why that is and what's happening there. Uh, when we talk about AdSense, but AdSense takes a little while to take off. It starts out slow and that's okay. But all the while, while you're working with AdSense, you're increasing your likes, you're decreasing your further ad spending requirements to make the same amount of money. Okay. So it's all a good thing. It's all an investment. So this is just a good example. Aiden put this together and off of, uh, just the, his, um, his Facebook, uh, page and um, you know you'll see that I mean every post is different yes um, somebody who's click click clicking is still not on mute so I'm not sure who that is but I just unmuted myself but I'm not typing so okay. whoever's typing um, is not is not muted so if yeah. whoever's typing can mute yourself or else I'm gonna go and mute all of you so <laughs> let that be a lesson um, but yeah I think this is a great uh, example, Steve, you can see that a couple of the posts there got almost no engagement at all. You can see the engagement uh, kind of on the right-hand side where the bars are, um, and some of them got a huge amount yep. of engagement, likes, comments, and shares. And this is just how it goes, and this is a very small cross-section. We're talking about 1 in 20 being a big winner, uh, and the other 19 kind of just cruising along. And you know what's interesting right away from this is the one that is kind of the most popular there. Um, 
is is one of those kind of viral things that would go belong on the websites. You know, five quotes that inspire you to work your ass off. You know, it's like it's another one of those list things that you know just keeps on ticking. You know, it's just kind of funny. Um, but when they hit, you know, they hit big. I mean, here's an example, and we've got the I think we yeah we've got the the expense associated with this. So you'll see on the 11th of January. Um, this uh, particular post that was being promoted, you know, brought in, you know, $770 that day. And the spend was only $21. Okay. So I'd have to do some quick math in my head there, but, um, you know, that is like, uh, let's see. I don't even know. Let's see. It would be uh, 700% ROI or something like that. I don't know. And, and this is just because of the viral nature. So some people have been saying, well, um, the math doesn't add up. I spend $1 on Facebook and I get uh, 10 people coming to my website, but then I'm only making $0.10 cents on AdSense. It doesn't add up. What you have to remember is that the traffic is not just coming from your ad on Facebook. It's a massive viral nature that kicks in when these things hit. Uh, and that's exactly what happened here. Yeah. yeah and, the, and the only reason we can refer it back to the spend is because that's all we did have to spend. You know, so that's okay. It's fair game to go back to the spend and say that's it. And G Gorab says, he guesses, if it's 1 in 20, then it's more of a fluke. Well, it's not a complete fluke. Not a fluke. These are, like, calculated, um, you know, kind of guesses really, we're, we're, we're identifying the best content and we're monitoring engagement and things like that before we even spend any money on it. Yeah. So it's it's calculated, it's not really a fluke, it's just that some things work better than others. So you give it your best shot every time and then some sometimes it will work better than others. Yeah. It's not a fluke if it happens over and over again, okay, and it's also, it also adheres to the normal rule that applies to almost everything in the universe, which is the 80-20 rule. You know, you'll find that in a retail store, 10 or 20% of the products make 80% of the profit. So is that a fluke? No, it's not a freaking fluke. That's the way the world works. That's exactly the way the world works. And Danielle's saying, so some posts take time to hit. Well, yeah, some posts take time to hit. Some will never really hit. And then others will be monstrous, humongous successes. And, and they're the ones that make the, you the money. The other thing is is the length of time too is is completely, uh, completely up in the air. I mean, there's even a few posts. What did we say, Mark? I think I asked you this the other day on the one site that's making um, like twenty grand a month. There's still like, is there four posts that are still running from January or something? Can't remember if it's four. Yeah, there's there's about four that are really old that have been running for you know six months right so yeah. Yeah. you know and, and I keep one of the things I keep um, telling people is we're not just look you know a lot of people say hey um, you know how long till I how many posts do I need before I hit one of these good posts or whatever you know I mean it just like you guys are talking about it you know it depends it depends on <laughs> you know when you hit it but we're not just looking to find one post right we don't is kind of the theme in some of these questions. We're not looking to just find that one yeah. and then sit back on our Bundesliga. You know, it's find a one, celebrate for a minute, and then go find three more or find more, find more, find more, because they all ultimately kind of have a shelf life, yeah. even if it's six or eight months. So, Yeah, they're all contributing to increasing your engagement, increasing your reach, increasing your likes, and then further decreasing your future ad spend. That's the bottom line. I mean, even if they don't make you a thousand percent ROI, uh, if they make ten percent, or or even if they break even, they are still contributing to increasing your reach, increasing your audience. And when that happens, you have to spend less to make the same amount. It's just math. So, okay. So I I spent a lot of time try and explain to you why I, I think this is so amazing 
and why, and maybe you understand a little bit more from my perspective, having lived through, you know, really having to bust my ass to get traffic that costs 10, 15, 20 times more than what you guys are able to get traffic for and having to bust my ass to, to get conversion rates and things that you guys do not have to worry about. Okay. Um, so maybe I just have a different perspective and I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys to make sure that, you know, you just understand, you know, and manage your, your expectations and things like that. But, and you can imagine when I went into the Google image search to search for butt pictures, what came up? It was fascinating. I, I must admit, I spent a good half an hour looking for just the right picture. This was not my first choice, really, but it's one that I ended up with because I felt this was a, a family audience. Um, I do know that people have kind of mental blocks about this. I, I see it. I've seen it my whole career. Um, and, and it's best, it's best, uh, shown by those guys who, you know, didn't want to increase their daily budget in AdWords. That that's the best way that I can really show that. Because that's just the biggest no-brainer in the world, right? And yet people just couldn't wrap their heads around it. Well, like, well, I can't spend more than fifty dollars a day. That's crazy. You know, it's just whatever it is. I, I don't understand it because it's I just it's hard for me to it's hard for me to have their perspective. You know. So so maybe you've got that mental block, or maybe you're just like this guy who's you know, <laughs> this is what came up when I when I typed in risk averse into the image image search. I can't. I got this guy. Uh, who I thought was kind of funny. So, or maybe, you know, you're just super, super risk adverse. You know, what about trying to do this with no or minimal cost? And you, it can be done. It's just slower. And it's it's not what we want to teach right this minute, but I feel the need to explain that it's coming. Um, but it's, it's slower for everybody. So it's kind of common sense. I mean, I, I think that you can sort of see how it can be done. At least I hope so. Um, you know, if you had a Facebook page, let, let me, let me lay it out like this. If your Facebook page had 10 million likes, okay, I bet you could make the leap of logic that says you probably don't need to spend any money on, on boosting posts, right? Because your reach just posting something on your site or on your Facebook page would be enormous. So you probably wouldn't have to spend any money. So I think you could also then understand that the way to run the 100K factory process without really spending, I don't know if that's zero, but you know, not a lot of money really, you know, because we've already done some like campaigns, is to increase your Facebook likes. Right. Because massive like numbers negate advertising costs in the long run. So we've got some strategies and tools to be able to do that. OK. You might also need more than AdSense. Which is, again, sometimes harder and slower to build up because. Um, you know, you have less traffic, right? And so, you know, because you're not, you don't want to spend the money, so you, you, you naturally will start slower and things like that. And so maybe you need things with higher payouts, you know, in order to meet financial goals. And that's okay. Because you can see that even the, you know, that's why I put some of these other numbers in here. You know, if you're not spending the money, then the return on investment can be, Great, but you don't need that much. You don't need that many affiliate sales. You don't need that many white label sales, Kindle books, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so in session nine, we'll spend that whole time reviewing a no slash minimal cost model before diving into phase two. And it's certainly something that anyone can use, even people who are using, you know, who are spending money to, to advertise, to boost posts. 
uh, can use these tactics and techniques. Again, the reason that we put it where we did is because of speed. Okay. So I wanted to let you guys know that this was always in our plan. In fact, we talked about it in our webinars. Um, but I wanted to let you know the perspective of everything, why I think what we're doing is so freaking fantastic, all right, compared to the real world and compared to how you used to have to do it. Um, but over and above that, how if you're risk averse or you have a mental block there, uh, how we can address that as well. Okay. Um, any comments, any further comments, questions, issues about my soapbox speech on um, this? Seem, seems to have resonated uh, with a lot of people. Um, a couple of little questions. Yeah. Someone was saying, um, what if I'm not getting a good click-through rate on the ads on my website? Why is this? Yeah. Well, we typically start... Um, typically when you've got a new website with new ads on it, the click-through rate from AdSense is much, much lower than what it tends, ends up being. Sometimes, you know, up to 10 times lower. Uh, and you can see it on that screenshot there. Uh, is that the one? Yeah. It doesn't have click-through rate on there, but click-through rate is another number that starts out really low. You can see the earnings, um, all the earnings metrics, all the page RPMs. I mean, they start out at nine cents and they finally get up to twenty one dollars. I mean that's a pretty huge jump. And all this is having to do with with click through rate and all that kind of stuff. This is just the AdSense pattern. That's how it starts. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um so the reason that you get lower click through rates at the beginning is because Google is still figuring out what your website's all about. So if your website's about phishing it may take Google some time to realize what your audience, the people that come to your website, are actually interested in seeing. So initially, the click-through rate is much lower than what it ends up to be. That's completely normal, happens uh, all the time. Uh, another person was asking, when can we start putting affiliate links on our sites? Uh, we will be explaining that in the coming sessions. We don't want to do it now because we don't want to confuse people, but uh, as Steve said, um, it's in the pipeline and, and you'll be able to see that. Um, another person said, and we mentioned this just before, but worth reiterating, the traffic is not just from Facebook ads. You get a massive viral component, which is why uh, the math works out so well for us. It's not, you can't just take the math and say, okay, I'm paying 10 cents for a visitor or 3 cents for a visitor, no. I'm making 10 cents per click. You can't just look at that. You have to look at the viral component as well, which really, you know, sends it into a different stratosphere. But the best, just a quick example of that. If you boost a post, okay, and you spend, you know, whatever to do that, and somebody, as a result of that boost, shares it on their timeline, okay, you've clearly paid for that engagement. But everything else that happens with that post that was shared which will now show up on all of their friends' timelines, you're not paying for that. So if they're, to use the simplest example, if their friend clicks on it, okay, who you don't even know and you didn't boost a post to and you didn't pay for, it not only do they visit your website and you didn't pay for them, uh, but it goes on their friends' timelines and then somebody else clicks on it and visits, well, you didn't pay for that. So... Anything else, Aiden? We may have lost Aiden into the internet connection hell that is New Zealand uh, right now. I was muted. Ah, okay. Or there's that. I was muted. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just replying to uh, another question. Um, someone was just saying, well, what about reach? Some posts have more reach than others. This is really... Well... In the nature of this, um, it's a nice game. So if you do 20 posts, then some of them are going to have a high reach, and the reach is how many people see uh, your ad or your post, um, and it does change. So okay. it's a numbers game, and it's the nature of the beast that some posts will get more exposure than others. Absolutely. All right. 
if there's nothing else on that, then let's just dive into acronyms for tonight. And we've, we've spent enough preamble of me talking about perspective. So let's just talk about what I wanted to accomplish tonight and moving forward. Uh, just to understand the big picture financially and gaining perspective. Hopefully we've kind of beat that horse. Um, I'd like you guys to understand a little bit about AdSense optimization and expectations. We certainly want everybody to learn how to expand posts to two pages when they sort of hit, you know, when they become popular. We want to do all that we can to increase the number of page views and increase the revenue. So we'll show you this. Um, I want everybody to get really good at driving traffic. Okay. I want everybody to be ninjas at cost per engagement execution. So I want people to practice this. All right. And not worry. We're, we're not going to spend a lot of money here. Okay. And, and not worry so much about the AdSense piece yet, but worry about the traffic. And we'll kind of talk about why that is. So I'd like you to continue posting you know, do so, do like, I mean, you don't have to do this per day, but over the week, you know, try and get like 20, 30 posts in across all your websites. So if you're doing one website, put them all on one website. If you're doing four, put them all across the different websites. And do at least two to three more of these boost campaigns and take one of those that's doing well and expand the post to two pages. Now do, and do more boost campaigns if you can and focus on the traffic part. Focus on the traffic and the cost per engagement. Focus on getting all of that traffic at three cents per engagement or less. That is our goal, that is our metric. Okay, so let's just dive into some bits of training that we need. So this is what Ed Aiden was just talking about. AdSense starts very slowly, all right? but it does optimize itself over time. And it's, it used to be a lot about what your website's about. And this is really, these are, these are really kind of the same thing. And, but now it's more about what your audience is about, right? I mean, AdSense used to actually, you know, read your website and, and that kind of stuff. And they still do some of that for sure. But now they're much more responsive and much more personalized. And we've, we've talked about this. And so they're trying to figure out your audience. They're trying to figure out what works for your audience, what works for people who are interested in extreme sports, you know, as an example. Um, and what you need to know is Google is very, very good at this. Okay. They only make money if you make money. They only make money if they can get people to click on the ads and they can get other people to pay them for those ads. The good news is they know what the heck they're doing. They made, they just announced their earnings and their stock went through the roof. They made more than $17 billion. $17 billion. You know how much of that came from selling ads? 95%. Also not a fluke, okay? 5% is from stupid Android or, you know, whatever the hell else they do, which nobody cares about, okay? So they really do know what they're doing, and that's great news for us. Because unlike me, having to worry about, you know, conversion rates and killing myself with my limited ability to design websites on getting people to convert. They are experts at it and they have like some of the smartest people in the world working on it every day. Way smarter than me. Okay. So the ad positioning part is already done for you. We took care of that. And there is nothing left to do except Feed Google people. Feed the beast. And you can see them doing it right here. You can see it. Okay. 
remember you can make your screen bigger by using the zoom option in the top left and we will have a bigger version of this image available for you in the summary uh, the summary PDF and the slides and just in case you can't actually see that they get better and hey, better Steve, can you give them the dates sorry can you give them the dates on this one just so they can see uh, yeah, the, the first date is Saturday, uh, December 20th, and the last date is Wednesday, January 7th. It's kind of a weird time, too, but because of Christmas, you know. Um, but you can see how they just keep getting better and better and better at serving up the right ads. Okay. I mean... One prime example, let's take a look because this is easy to see, okay? Um, you've got 1,000, 1,500 page views right here on January 1st, okay? Which resulted in 23 clicks, all right? So that means that um, for 1,500 page views, only 23 ads were clicked. Jump down to the end. And let's essentially just call this double, because here's 3,300 ads. So that's double from the first to the seventh, okay? So if we double the page views, you'd expect the clicks to double. So they'd go from 23 to 46, but instead, they didn't, they didn't double. They went up by a factor of 10. Why? Because AdSense every day got better and better and better and better at understanding what ads this audience wants to see. And as they get better, you make more money. Okay? So the earnings went up by a factor of 10 almost. For when you when just by when just increasing the page views by a factor of 2. Follow that math? So that's the only thing that could have happened there. And, and it did. I mean, we see it all the time. This is exactly how it starts out. Does that make sense to everybody? So you have to expect this. And, you know, this is something that, you know, we didn't, when we just asked you to do one of these, you can't really see this pattern, you know? But if you see this pattern and you go, well, crap, I, you know, I sent 68 people and I made nine cents or whatever. I made nothing, a penny. People get concerned. It's like, well, yeah, but that's like the guy who sent 10 clicks and said AdWords don't, doesn't work. You, you can't yeah. do it that Steve, way. Steve, yeah. some people have said they've even started seeing this happening a lot already. They said they started out with virtually zero click-through rate, and after about a week, they've – it's just – transformed completely yeah. like going on the slide here so right. um, it's a pattern something that happens over and over again yeah and this and if I may they're like a simple a story kind of for this right and what Steve is talking about of this this optimization and Google getting to know who you are who your audience is really on your site you know say there's an advertiser that wants to sell shoes right so on day one they they there may be shoe ads on your website Right. But ultimately, if it's a rock climbing um, website, ultimately those shoes are going to be, you know, hiking boots or rock climbing shoes. Like it's going to get very, very, it's going to get, it's going to get to know who you are and who your audience is. And it's going to start to show those, those very relative ads. And that's when, you know, the, the, the rock climbing audience doesn't give two flips about ballet shoes, right? When they see the things, carabiners and water bottles and backpacks and rope and stuff like that, that's when it starts to become relative to that audience, and it and that's when the click-through rate goes up, and that's when you make more money. So it takes a little bit of time to. That's my shoe story. Yeah, no, I love it, and and it's really and and it goes back to this, it's it's not a stretch, okay, to put your faith in a company that makes $17 billion in doing this, okay? They do know what the, <laughs> I really want to curse. They do know what the heck they're doing. They really, really do. And you can see it here and we see it over and over again. They are relentless 
in optimizing their ad network because it is where they make 95% of their money. Also, that example screenshot you showed, James was asking how old is the site from this example. That was a brand new site. I mean, yeah. you can see it started uh, late December. That was brand new. So similar situation to what um, probably a lot of people on this call are in. Yeah. And this site is now making like 10, 10K a month in profit. So, I mean, it's, this is no, no freaking joke here. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the multiple page post. So why would we do this? Why the heck would we? And, by, and let's say what we're talking about. We're going to show you, but what the hell are we talking about? What we're talking about is, is taking one post where when they came to your website before, they would see on one page all of the content. And what we take that and we break it into two pages. And I'm quite certain that all of you have seen this <laughs> because it happens every time you click on something on the Internet where you go, oh, you know, I'd really love to see that. I'd really love to read that. And you click on it and it's like, oh, it's one of these, I gotta sit here and click page two, page three, page four. So they're doing it for the same reason that we're doing it, okay? And that is that we can get more page views from a single visit by doing this, all right? And when we get more page views, that means we get more people seeing the ads. Or we, or we get people seeing more ads. And when they see more ads, there's it's more likely that they will click on an ad. And when they click on an ad, what happens, everybody? All at once, what happens, what happens? We make money, okay? So it's, it's a pretty common sense kind of thing. Um, and the whole idea here is when you start to see a post, quote unquote, hit, then it's time to break out the big guns and make sure that you can see that, you know, 700% return on investment. And one of the ways of doing that is by taking the single post and breaking it up into two. Okay. So it's really, really easy to do. There's a little button when you're editing your post. Okay. And you just hit that button where that red arrow is right up here and it puts a page break in there. And what that does is it's, is it'll give it a little, um, well, you'll see, but it gives you a little next. Let's see if I just have it real quick. Uh, yeah. So it gives you this. Okay. Um, it gives you page one, page two and next. All right. So it breaks up the post. You'll see right here. This post was the picture. And then we put this little text here and we hit the page break button and that results in this kind of presentation when people go look at the post. And you can play with this and see it yourself. You're not going to hurt anything. Okay. So what do we want to do here? Um, we need to have enough, you know, we don't want to make this like really annoying, you know. Um, and we also want them to go to page two. So a good way is to kind of break up, you know, your, your, your menu for how to, how to curate a post, um, into, into two sections here, have your sub headline here, have, you know, your paragraph here, have a couple pictures and then have some kind of call to action to get them to see, get them to page two so that they then see the rest of the content. Okay. And this, this is the same model, you know, that we had for, oops, sorry. This is the same model that we had for, you know, how to curate content. All we've added is this call to action to get them to see page two and maybe this headline to intro this content. Okay. So the post when it was one page, didn't have this call to action here in red and didn't have this sub headline. Okay. It just kind of, oh, for God's sake, sorry. It had all the other stuff. All right. And so just in the image, the, 
and the image on the first page. Like adding an image on the first page is real important. Yeah. You know, something something from the video, maybe one portion of the image, maybe if it's a list of five things, the first one, you know. Right. And you know, one page is just the beginning. You can go 80, 8,500 pages for all I care. Just you know, this is just the process. Yeah. Yeah. Something this works. Something this works them. really well with top ten lists, top five lists, things right. like that. So if you've got any posts. Top five lists, you could just break it into five little, uh, you know, different pages. Yeah. And that's what everybody does, by the way. I mean, you'll see whenever you click on anything, you know, the top 10 celebrity bikini shots, you know, they, I've seen, not that I click on those all the time, but if, if you were to click on those for some reason, then not only will you see them breaking it out into 10 pages, they usually break it out into 20 or 30 because they, they have like, you know, Halle Berry, and then they have like a little blurb about Halle Berry on page two and another little blurb about Halle Berry on page three. And then you got to go all the way to page four to see, you know, whatever, Jessica Simpson or something. Okay. Sorry, I know way too much about this, but. Um, so this is what it looks like uh, when you and, do it. And just one, one thing. Yep. You can't do this wrong. So if you're saying, should I put an image on the first page and a video on the second page, or should I put a video on the first page and text on the second page, you can't do this wrong. So just uh, just change things up. Try different things, and you'll see what works best in your niche very quickly. But you do need something. I mean, to, to Brent's point, you do need something on the first page to grab interest. Should be yep. an image of some kind uh, along with something else and you need a call to action to get them to, to go to the subsequent pages. So you can see it's very clear here. We'll have some other examples. So <clears throat> this is um, this is how it looks with a two pager. Sorry about the, this kind of warped perspective here. Um, but you can see this is the title of the post and the featured image of the post, right? These are ads. Um, and then you can see the beginning. This guy was selected to participate in ESPN's Real Wake. You can see why. Uh, so a little bit of blurb, a little bit of content, the picture, and then the call to action. Check out the big air and monster moves on the next page below. And then you hit two or next, and then you get this. You still get the same header and, uh, and featured image. And then you get the second page content, okay? Is that clear to everybody, like how to do that? You know, it's just, it's, it's really, this is really all it is. You can take your post, modify it slightly because now it's going to be on multiple pages and wherever you want a page break, just hit that button. And it Two breaks. comments for you. Yeah. So um, lots of questions in here about curation rules. Like everything we've ever done about like 50% uh, of the content or anything with regards to like, you know, um, making sure that there's 100 words on every page of your own original content, all those rules apply. If anything, you need to make it a little bit more because you're doing two pages here, so you have more real estate to put just to kind of fill in, so it doesn't look like somebody else's content. Um, and then um, secondarily, um, what was the other question here? Yes, you can go back to any other post that you already have on your website, and you can simply edit them and add the two-page sequ sequence in really easily. Yeah. And the other thing is that don't worry. You know, it's it's we we all want to be very efficient, and we want to work as little as possible. And so you're, but keep in mind, you're only going to do this extra work for those posts that are, you know, getting traction for those posts that are really going to make you those big, the big money. Um, those are the only posts you're going to do this for. So, you know, maybe, maybe again, you know, 20% of your posts or whatever, or not even that much, you know, more like 5% of your posts, the fluke ones. The smack whoever said that. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's talk about uh, cost per engagement optimization, some things that, that you can do. Um, the early reports are good, which I'm, I'm happy to hear, you know, that people are, uh, are able to, to get, you know, three cents or less. Um, and we know that if you can get three cents or less, that should be less than or equal to. We know, we absolutely know that if you give it enough time, okay, 
that if you can get engagements at three cents or less, you will be successful. That is really the defining benchmark and why we're so focused on it and why we want you to practice this. Now, it's hard for me as a real analytical guy to say, uh, you know, we're not too worried about the revenue side of it, you know, which seems ridiculous, but we've just seen enough of these to know that in the beginning, it's not going to look pretty with AdSense, but you see how fairly quickly it improves itself. Okay. And we know that the magic is not the revenue side because Google takes care of that themselves. The magic is the traffic side. And the magic is getting engagements at three cents or less. If you can routinely get engagements at three cents or less, you will be successful. And oh, by the way, when we talk about posts that hit, we're not necessarily saying that the other posts are are 10 cents an engagement or losing money. What we're, what we really mean that the ones that hit is are they're the ones that drive the volume of traffic. So that's a really important point because we don't mean to suggest that you know these 19 out of 20 posts or whatever 95% of them are losing money uh, or they're costing you know tons of amount of money to to run. It's not what we're saying. That's not the definition of a hit. Definition of a hit are the ones that all of a sudden drive the volume of traffic, okay? Because, you know, listen, if you get one user engagement at less than three cents, uh, you know, will you potentially make a penny of profit? Sure, you know, uh, yes, okay. But we want to not, we, we want to make more money than that. So it has to be at the right price, but then it also has to be the volume at the right price. And it's, that's a really important point. So if you're not getting the, th the three cents or less, you know, one of the things you could think about doing is researching and testing additional interest groups. So if you remember from last session, you know, we had you uh, duplicate ads and run them for different interests. So if you are using the one that the only one that you created for, you know, that you use for your light campaign, um, or, or maybe you're using two or three, maybe it's not enough. Maybe you need some more. Okay. So you can try out some other ones. You can't really lose there. And if you find a one that works really well, you might go back and do a light campaign on that one as well. I, I would. You could also test smaller interest groups. Okay. Under 500,000, you know, audience levels, that kind of thing. You can repost a couple of days later with a new image and headline. If you, if you get one that just you're like why did this not work you know why did it drive a lot of traffic you thought this cat video was like you know the best cat video like ever on the internet you know which should have brought you you know a billion users so maybe it was the image you used or the headline or something like that you can experiment with that you can you can change the image in the headline in facebook but not on the post right so you can share the url again all right um and then Facebook will bring in the default image and the and the headline, but you can change it. You can change it. You don't have to change it on your website. Although if you have, use a new image or something, you could you could put it on your website too as an additional image in the story or something for continuity. And you want to be ruthless. You know, we talked about when to look and when to turn off last session. Just turn them off. The ones that are not working at the right price, and really it's about the price because, you know, even if it's not generating a lot of traffic, if it's at the right price, it's fine. It's not going to hurt you. Okay. But be ruthless in the pricing because you don't have to mess with it. We talked about that. You know, somebody said, well, how do I get it from 10 cents down to three? Who, we don't, I don't care. I don't care. We got enough to work with that we don't have to worry about it. Right. Okay. Let's review our action items here. And let's just make sure that we've gone through enough stuff and then we'll have some time to take some, take some more questions. Um, so hopefully you guys understand a little bit more about why we're so passionate about this. And I, again, I think it's, it's really hard if you're new um, or even if you, you've been around a while, but haven't had a lot of, 
you know, successes and failures and just experience in general. I, I think it's really difficult to have perspective on things. I also think it's difficult to, um, by nature, we have to train in a linear fashion. There's no other way to do it. You have to build on one concept, build on a foundation and increase, you know, complexity and, and scale and stuff like that. That's the only way to do it. Right. Um, however, what you kind of lose sometimes is the bigger picture and that full circle and context for what we're doing. So hopefully, um, you know, everybody's sort of gained a better perspective and understands the power and the secret of this traffic that we're able to get here. It's, it's mind blowing. If you've had the experiences that I've had over the last decade, mind blowing. Um, Really important to understand that AdSense optimization and the expectations. Again, probably something we should have shared last week. Uh, but again, just, you know. Um, learn to expand the post to two pages when they hit. Improving the cost per engagement through practice and through some of the things that we talked about here. So moving forward, what I really want you to focus on in between this session and next is to continue posting. Because this is what it's all about, posting information, evaluating those posts, doing those four steps that we kind of went through last week, right? Evaluating the posts, pulling out the ones that are clearly big engagers, doing the boost campaigns, and looking for the ones that are really going to generate the, a lot of traffic at the right price and expanding those posts to two pages. And do more both pages and posts boosts if you can. But focus, focus, focus on that three cents per engagement. Okay. If if you have done this last you know last week, right? And you've sent traffic, and you do this this week, okay? Then we should have people that are starting to see, you know, some of these really impressive jumps. Okay. All right. Anybody want to see uh, one? One thing, Steve. Um, so, Go ahead. Yeah. Someone was just saying that they're struggling to get all four of their websites to a point, all four Facebook pages to a point where they've got enough fans, and they're just worried about that. And yeah. if you are in that situation, I would just say, well, just you know, take a minute to catch your breath and focus on just one for now and get that one uh, up and running if you're finding it too hard to manage four at once. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. I think it's easier to learn um, if you're a little bit overwhelmed trying to do all that at once if you just focus on one. So I, I definitely agree. Okay. Okay. So let's talk Q&A because that's a uh, all we're going to talk about tonight as far as um, training and things go. So what do we got? What do we got? Mark, Brent, you guys have been answering questions behind the scenes too. Anything that's been a common thread, anything that's, uh, you know, stuff we, sh we should be addressing? I got two winning stories that are really, really good that we'll share next time. I don't have all the data, but I mean, there's good to see that there's a lot of people that are doing, that are actually making money. That's so, great. Um, I've actually had three, like, just off the charts kind of uh, successes. So that's pretty fantastic. Awesome. You so you're you're gathering that data to share with everybody, yeah? Yes, sir. Awesome. That is really good. All right. Mark, you have good news to share as well. Are you on mute? Or... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was still reading questions from like 20 minutes ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> any any um sort of common threads of questions that we should address as a group? I think a lot of people could benefit from going over the um, the workshops we did. I think they were week two and three, possibly three and four, about how we, you know, set up getting likes um, and how we set up advertising and, and things like that. Because there's a lot of sort of random questions related to them, not really a common thread, but a lot of sort of random ones. So if you're at that point, um, I would recommend definitely going through that training again. Make sure you also use the um, summary sheets as well because they've got additional information. 
Yeah, actually, I was going to rec- I was going to say that same thing. You know, it might even be better to start with the summary sheets because it's quicker. Um, and per- if your question is answered there, you don't have to listen to me drone on. You know, even though I know that secretly some of you put me on that two x speed thing. Damn you! <laughs> Damn you all! <laughs> yeah, that really makes you sound really good. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like Mickey Mouse or something. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, you get a, some people asking about, like, um, you know, give it, you know, we want a, uh, like an overall view of the program and this and this and this, but, you know, just like Steve said earlier at the beginning of all this, you know, it's hard to just fast forward and jump into teaching you something that you, you know, might need to know in the middle and then backtrack into here. It's like, just like you saw with today, right, with these multi-page posts, you know, we're doing everything in a very linear fashion, trying to give you enough information at each stage to, to, to make a, a sound decision, et cetera. And then you, you just have to trust that we're going in steps, right? I mean, yes, AdSense takes a minute to optimize and make more revenue. Now, once we start to get that in line, we're going to do multi-page posts. And then, you know, we're really taking you from the very, very, very beginning stages. Um, And again, like I keep saying, like Steve said, because Steve has done most all the talking. But um, (laughs) like he said, you know, we're, you know, we've done a lot of work. We've put together a lot of stuff and information and and Facebook pages and websites and building websites and you know, and doing all this and applying for AdSense, et cetera, and learning all of the ads on Facebook and, and all this stuff. That's a lot of stuff, and we had to teach it in a linear fashion. So, you know, just be assured that, you know, we're, we're doing everything that we're doing for a reason. You know, there's a purpose for it, and it is like a, a crawl, walk, run, crawl, run, what? Um, <laughs> you know, however fun. that goes, right? That's um, cool. You know, but it, but it goes in that fashion. So, I mean, that was like seven or eight questions I, a- I read earlier, and I just, you know, that was kind yeah. of my thought on that. Yep. Yeah. Um, I did put the link to the software that you can use to speed up Steve's voice. Oh, for crying out loud. I was actually going to say to all of you people asking for that, go scratch. Forget it. We're not going to give you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And I'm making a conscious effort to speak extremely slowly today in case anyone is wondering. <laughs> Great. Um, Brett, anyway, is asking, question. Brett is asking, last week Steve said he would look at his files for something to help with catchy headlines. Yeah, I did look, and I didn't find anything, and I know I have something. I just don't know where the hell it is. I have um, – I don't know if you were on there, Aiden, uh, but there's – somebody put out – and. I don't remember where somebody put out like a, here are the 50 best ways to start a headline, you know, years ago. Uh, we it, can find, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. It was, the, it was Kennedy it. or somebody, you know, some, one of the copywriters years ago did it. Yep. And it was really good. Um, but I can't, I couldn't find it. I think, I think I know where it is. I'll okay. make a note to look okay. for it. Uh, Nina is asking how, and uh, Brent or Mark, I'll let you guys chime in here. How long do you let an ad go before you turn it off? Like, what's the tipping point when you just say, I'm going to turn this one off? Cost for engagement ring too high, one, and then two until it stops making money. There's there's a point where it stops sometimes. Yeah. Well, almost all the time. Right. So uh, I'll say, you know, knowing that we're trying to get, you know, one, two, or three cent clicks, right? If and I've said this to quite a few people in the in the chat box. If if that sucker starts out right away at you know fifty cents, kill it. Because <laughs> that's because that's not going to come into line with what we're trying to do. Um, you know, but but by the same token, if it starts at, I mean, I've had I've had um, ads that, um, and I usually I'm kind of impatient, but. <laughs> Um, someone once told me that I should let uh, ads go for 72 hours, right? Three days. Sorry. <laughs> and, yeah, right. That was Brent. <laughs> I got, you know, I've kind of, I've kind of stripped that down to about a 48-hour window, um, mostly because I know on, on for my audiences, I know what I'm looking for, you know. But if you give it, you know, I, I read some of these things, and and some folks are like, well, I did an ad, 
you know, this morning and by lunchtime it was still at whatever. You know, it's like you, and you can't watch paint dry or grass grow. You know, you know, give it a little bit of time to develop, especially early on. You know, it's not just AdSense that's trying to figure out your audience and optimize. It's Facebook that's, you know, there's, there's, we got multiple networks that are going on here. So yeah. I know I'm kind of uh, breaking protocol and, and talking about AdSense again, but, you know, it's, uh, to answer your question, if we're shooting for two cent uh, engagements, I would. If anything's over fifteen cents, I'd keep a, a real tight eye on it. Um, but if it's at fifteen cents or so, you know, let it go for forty-eight hours and see what happens. You know, you're only running a, uh, you know, two or three dollar ad. So, yep. yep. Start with that. So just to sum up there, let your ad run <laughs> for forty-eight hours and then make your decision. I should just tell you first, Aiden, and then let you <laughs> summarize. <laughs> I like your story. Good, good. Uh, I, I, I may have uh, misspoke earlier, and it's important that I clarify. Um, on the two-page post, on, on both pages, you do not need 100 words on both pages. You know, just use the formula that, on that slide that I gave there um, earlier um, that we gave here. This one here, um, that one. Uh, the subheadline, 100 words, a picture, three a call to action to get into page two, and then on the new page, subheadline to enter the content, one small sentence, the content, and then source all the content. That's the structure that you should follow every single time on multiple pages. Now, given if you have pages between pages one and the final page, you know, you can just continue repeating the top half of the page two there and then source all the content at the bottom of the final page. But, um, you know, you definitely want to have some, some meat on every single page. Don't let it just be blank. Or you know, not blank, but just be just uh, someone else's content. It needs to be their content plus yours. And the only thing we've really added here from the original post is this call to action here, this subheadline, and maybe this one small sentence. I mean, that's really the only thing that's been added. The rest of it is was already there for the most part because it's part of the you know the the recipe of curating a post. So another question here and. Um... Brent, Mark, Steve, one of you guys can take this. What is the criteria for really scaling up? When the engagement cost gets to under three cents, how should we scale up? <laughs> I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Yeah, thanks. Um, so um, when I, I, I had one this past week that did really good out of the gate. Um, it came in, and I think we were looking at something like 5,000 organic uh, reach within a few, maybe three, four hours. You know, I think the click-through rate was something like 16 17%. So I started running a lot of ads to it. So um, just to try, you know, come out of the gate with about $20 of the ads, four different interests to see which, you know, which interest is going to take off and be the least expensive. Um, so I found that interest, and I went ahead and run, ran with it about two days later. And it still turned out that uh, that particular ad, uh, that particular post did not turn out to be very profitable because of the earnings um, from AdSense. Sometimes some certain posts just don't, have the same revenue potential as others. So you just kind of like you have to kind of uh, you know watch your numbers, watch the the analytics, and just be really you know on top of it so you're not wasting any money. But I guess the the answer to that is just you know when you when you're scaling a post, you just you just spend more on that particular boost post. You know I saw somebody in here that asked me if we do more light campaigns once I find a winner. No, we do more boost posts of that particular post to find that winner or to and increase that winning. And remember. You, if you're doing it the way that we're recommending, you're only spending about two dollars per day, and we're not recommending that you do this to a whole bunch of different posts. We're saying take small steps at first, mm -hmm. um, and then once you've got money coming in, then we can start scaling up. And it's also important that for what we want you to do right now is we don't want you to worry about the AdSense revenue part of it yet. So. You know, Brent started to talk about that, that which is fine. It's important, but not for you tonight, and not for you between sessions, uh, right now, these sessions. Sorry about that. We're not. That's okay. Um, so that's really important. Just we don't want you to worry about the revenue side of things right this minute, for two reasons. One is we want to solve the traffic problem first, because that's really the only hard part, and it's not even that hard. Uh, the other thing is that AdSense is evolving, and we need to feed that beast first anyway. So just hold on to your hat there. Um, but when you see something that's working, you want more of it, right? So you want more, you want more exposure. And the ways to do that, uh, there's really only two ways to do that. One is 
you can obviously increase your budget and stuff for that for the boost you're doing. The other is you can make more ads for that same material for that same post uh, going to different interest groups, as Brent said. So those are the only two ways you can really uh, expand. And you should do that. I think a definition on the amount of traffic would be useful. Like, I mean, I don't know. What do you think is a lot of traffic, Steve, or a good amount? <laughs> That's like saying, you know, how 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 long is a how long is a piece of string? I mean, you know, I mean, you can see. I mean, a good, here's a good way to answer that question. Uh, right here. Uh, maybe not here. Hold on. Uh, where's that other one? Hold on. I'm gonna find it. I got a piece of string right here. <laughs> how long is that piece of string? Here you go. So here's here's a good way to answer that question. I mean, look, we want we want these uh, these these things, these these sites to make, you know, roughly somewhere around two thousand uh, dollars a month, right? Somewhere around there. So that's uh, how much is that per uh, day? That's like seventy bucks a day ish, something like that in profit. Yeah. So let's say we need, you know, I don't know, maybe somewhere like in order to do that, let's just be conservative and say that we need. Uh, let's pick this number, $166 in revenue per day. Well, $166 in revenue per day is 7,000, call it 8,000 page views. If you figure two page ver views per visit on average, that's 4,000 visitors a day. And it's probably a little less than that because it, the average page views is probably like 2.5 ultimately, something like that. Let's call it 3,000 visitors a day-ish. I would say. So I don't know. I mean, to me, enough traffic is probably, you know, somewhere in that range. It's that order of magnitude, right? It's, you know, one to 3,000 visitors per day, probably, depending on how you're monetizing and stuff like that. Is that, yep. how does that feel, Mark? I think that's good. Yeah. Don't ever ask me how it feels. <laughs> um, I say to that question, you know, that's the math, right? That's the math on the business model part of this. But, you know, the, the whole idea of this is when you strike the, those viral posts, those virally natured posts, right? So that's true. Yeah. I say try to try to make your make the money, make the business part of this work based on the math like Steve just ran through. And, and the gravy is going to come from the viral posts, right? That's where you're going to um, start to rein in that that kind of, you know, the stocking stuff for money. So that's a, that's a really good point. I mean, you know, you can, you can take a typical month, right? And you could be, you could be humming along at 300 visitors a day, 500 visitors a day, 600 visitors a day, something like that. All of a sudden you get two viral posts that bring in, you know, 20,000 people. I mean, which is conceivable. And so that's, so what Brent is describing, or what Mark is describing is, is, probably more likely what the real world looks like with this kind of viral traffic. Um, and then, and then if you average it out over 30 days, you know, it probably is the math more like I'm talking about. So that's a really good perspective. I agree. The other thing worth remembering is that this training program that you're going through right now, we had people going through that, a small group of test students, kind of like uh, guinea pigs working with us for best part of 12 months. And every single person that persevered, went through the learning curve, all of their websites were making money. Now, some of them, maybe, were just making $1,000 profit per month. But others got to the point, and these are students, not even us. Others got to the point where they were doing $20,000 per month. What we're talking about here, and we've been talking about this from the start, is conservatively aiming for $2,000 profit per month from each website. And that's extremely uh, realistic. It's a very, very conservative goal, something that's easy to get to as long as you just kind of follow along. So at the moment, you're kind of in the toughest part when you're just coming to grips with everything. You just have to push through that um, and you'll get on to the really fun part where you're seeing these kind of results. All right, let's see. Um... Someone was asking, at what point 
do you stop running uh, paid like campaigns? If you're getting your likes uh, to your Facebook page for really cheap, uh, then you may just want to leave it going because it's going to help you uh, a lot. On the flip side of that, on Facebook pages that we've got and a range of different um, niches that have got you know 5,000 plus fans, we find that um, just with that sort of fan base, we can get some pretty decent results. Um, in fact, a good example of that is the is my internet marketing Facebook page, which Steve showed you some um, stats from before. You know, 5,000 uh, followers on there. Any time something is put on that website, it gets hundreds and hundreds, sometimes thousands of clicks, just because there's a thousand, there's a 5,000 person base there. So. 5,000 seems to be some sort of magic number um, that we've encountered. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Yep. Um, let's see. Just looking to see if I can... Uh, uh, um, James is asking, why have four sites when we can make 8K with one site? Yeah, I mean, it's like anything else, you know. Um, you know, diversity is good, you know, and absolutely some sites are going to do better than others. And it's not even because, you know, the execution is wrong or anything like that. Sometimes it's just the way that you – interpret the niche that you interpret the audience you know i mean it's it's like anything else you know it it, it just kind of spreads your risk around and um it, it it's always better to have a diversified portfolio uh bringing in revenue than it is to have just one property always uh and so you know we felt like four after looking at this business model and looking at people trying it and things like that, we felt like four was the right mix of effort and diversification to give you the best kind of return on investment. So. Hey Steve, I'll yeah. say something to that effect too is, you know, we, uh, it's kind of like, you know, having kids. I don't know if any of you guys have kids, but you know, having two kids is not just twice as, hard as having one kid, right? Like, it's a lot harder to, in my opinion, in my experience, to make 10 grand off of one single site than it is two grand. So, you know, I, I feel I can replicate the two grand model a lot easier. And secondarily is the reason why, one of the big reasons why we had you kind of pick one big niche um, and then sub niches within it, etc. is later in some of our training, and I'll little spoiler alert, but, um, you know, we're going to be able to, once we pay to get that two cent engagement onto our website, and then we run them through two pages, uh, a post. So now we're getting multiple visits, page views per visitor. But then, well, we may throw a link in that article that says, hey, over at, uh, you know, the yoga site, not yogurt, but the yoga site, because they just came off of a meditation site, you know, Here's an article that talks about this. So you really, you try to engage people to click even further to one of your other sites. So you're monetizing, you're paying once for that visitor and you're monetizing on that person several times. Yep. So sorry for the spoiler. <laughs> we'll cover, we'll cover that later. <laughs> so David's saying 20 vids a day is impossible. I, I want to make sure nobody's, I, I don't know where I ever said tw to do 20 videos a day or 20 posts a day. I never said that. So I don't know. Not quite sure what you mean by that, David, but when I said 48 posts per day in total, um, and again, that's again sort of the average, you know, and then I said, then I kind of said, you know, so if you did like, you know, 20 to 40 kind of posts over a week's time, but spread them across all the websites. So if you have one website, you're going to do them all on one website. If you had four, maybe you do five each, you know, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So. I, maybe that was just maybe I didn't explain that properly. Um, okay. Yeah, we did see that. That's a that video of the surfer and the shark. 
it's a good example of some incredible viral content. That and how many people have seen the Huskies? I think they're Huskies, the dogs doing the little, they cock their heads and that video, that's like blowing up the internet, you know? So, anyway, sorry. Uh, hey, uh, so several questions that I'm noticing. I'm kind of still hanging back into some of the 20-minute-ago uh, uh, questions. Yeah. Um, but people asking about multi-page posts, right? So asking whether or not, like, they... They just hate those websites that they go to where yeah. there's 20 pages and have, they have to click each time and to get to you know each picture and stuff. Right. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. You know, we're certainly not advocating to do you know 20 pages, break a, a post up into 20 pages. I, I think the most I've ever done is four. You know, three is kind of my max. I just had enough content for four one time. Um, but you know, I wouldn't do more than than three or four. You know, you really kind of start to see your numbers fall off after that amount. So, you know, we're not trying to be like those, you know, the sleazy tabloid type of <laughs> sites, you know. So, and people don't get, and, and, and so the part two of the question is, and do, do uh, our site visitors get turned off by having to click through so many? So, you know, if, if you're putting the content on there and, and breaking it up in a, in a, in a good manner, where it just flows, you know, then no, people don't mind clicking to a couple of pages no. to consume their content. So They're kind of trained to do it now anyway, uh, honestly. Yeah, um, they get to our sites and they're like, woohoo, only two pages. Yeah, exa exactly. I mean, there's a lot to that. And um, and you can tell, by the way, you know, if, if people were pissed, the bounce rate would be high um, and the page views would be low. And that's not the case. So we know for certain, we know objectively and quantifiably that they are not. Uh, Julie says, Sue, we should go out and swim around a shark bait so we can get a viral post. <laughs> yeah, you could try that. Um, Jim says, so what about keeping it easy and just finding the viral videos and doing those? Screw the articles. Yeah, Jim, you can totally do that. <laughs> you can totally do that. It depends on the niche. You know, I mean, some niches obviously will have a lot more videos than others, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, videos are... I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, you know, videos are pretty powerful. So um, Another thing to keep in mind is that after you've been through this entire process once, you'll obviously be able to do it a lot, lot faster than what we're doing it at the moment. Right now we're teaching and doing, but if you were just doing it, uh, you know, from scratch again with all the knowledge, obviously you'll be able to fast forward what we've done. So... Yeah. You can definitely do that once you know how to do it all, for sure. Um, Dave, David, just I refer you back to this. I said four to eight posts per day in total. You're extrapolating that to say per site, which is why you keep coming up with math that doesn't equal what I'm saying. Okay, so please read this again where it says in total, meaning across all websites. So if you had four websites, you might make one post per day on each website. That would equal four in total. Okay. All right. And uh, David said, um, once you've got one website that is making money, even if you're building four of them, wouldn't it make sense to focus on that one website? Yeah. I mean, just make that decision when the time comes. Don't worry about things in the future that are still kind of hypothetical. But yeah, I mean, it may well make sense in that case, but you take it on a case by case basis. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, what's a good? Um, somebody's asking, what's a good bounce rate for these uh, websites? Um, what's the? We've shown under a fifty percent. Under fifty yeah. percent has yeah. been um, really, really solid, and we showed that on some of the initial webinars, Steve. Yeah. Which is really, really good. I mean. If somebody asked me that, I would say, like in general, I would say it would be higher than that, you know. But um, but anyway, it's yeah, it's really good. Carl was just asking um, if AdSense pays you each time someone clicks on the ad. Yep, that's right. It's not based on impressions or anything like that. You get paid each time someone clicks on that little ad that will appear on your website. Some people are asking what what is bounce rate. Um, bounce rate is when people go to your website and then they quickly press the back button. Um, they just didn't like what they see. 
So it's not bounce rate is not anything to do with people going to the second page or anything like that. It's people that go to your website and then boom, click right back. They're like, ugh, this is awful. I don't want. They don't spend any time on the website. I forget what the Google has a definition where they spend X number of seconds and then they go back. That's a bounce. I don't know what the number of seconds is, but. Uh, I don't know. What I'm just browsing through looking for more, but I think most yeah. of them. Yeah, I think we're in pretty um, good shape. I mean, we're, we're coming up on, we're, we're 850 now. Um, so I think, you know, I think everybody's, I, I hope we've accomplished what we set out to do here tonight, which is I want everybody to catch their breath. I want everybody to really gain perspective on what's going on here. I want you to understand why we're so damn excited about this model because it's just so orders of magnitude different than what we've done in the past and what we've suffered through in the past, frankly. Um, and I know firsthand. And hopefully everybody understands a little bit more about AdSense expectations and what they need to do. And the focus, I want you to leave tonight understanding that the focus needs to be on posting, evaluating, boosting, and managing those boost, boosted posts to get the most traffic that you can at three cents or less of an engagement. Okay, That needs to be your focus right now. The rest of it will all take care of itself because you have Google who makes $17 billion in ads working for you, essentially. That's a good thing. Awesome. Well, right. um, there's loads of good feedback rolling in here, Steve. So I think good. this did resonate with um, people here today. So thanks, Excellent. everyone, for the feedback. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yep. Um, I'm going to be working on the summary sheet for this in the next 24 hours. So we should have that for you soon, and we'll have this replay up. Uh, again so as well, soon uh, as well. So um, stay focused on what we're doing. Um, we're building a solid foundation and people are already starting to cash in. You're going to cash in as well as long as you keep just pushing forward, taking small steps towards the finish line. Yep. So uh, thanks very much, guys. We'll get this uh, replay up as soon as possible and we'll talk again soon. Cheers. Bye.